Joining us in studio today is Jacob Soboroff. Uh, Jacob is the host of NBC's new show, uh, School Pride. Co it's co-host, uh, co-host. Co yeah. uh, who co is your, who's co-hosting with you? Tom Stroop, uh, SWAT commander from Orange County, Florida. Uh, oh. Susie Castillo, former TRL VJ Miss USA. Wow. Kim Whitley, comedian and former substitute teacher out of uh, Cleveland, Ohio. You guys Ohio. have more hosts than the Young Turks. That's pretty great. <laughs> uh, well, in, in any case, uh, the, the show's going to be on uh, this. It's sort of like Extreme Makeover School Edition, kind of, right? We could debate that in a little uh, bit. All right. But... Okay. Well, we'll talk about that. But it is, in essence, that's what, uh, you know, that's what we lay people will say. Uh, the, the show is, is going to be on this Friday, October 15th on NBC, uh, 8 o'clock, 7 Central, uh, and Mountain. Yeah, Mountain Time, I don't know, 8 o'clock again? No, I, think it's seven, seven? Seven, I think it's right. 7 Central and Mountain. Isn't that it's what It's also say? up for debate. Yeah. We're going to have to check with NBC. I've never that. heard it before. But, uh, <laughs> but in any case, uh, you know what, Jake? Why don't you t tell us a little bit about the show because I haven't done any justice. And I'd like to see a clip of it and then we can talk a little bit more. Yeah, about absolutely. Well, what School Pride is is basically an effort uh, for communities. We go in and we help communities empower themselves to take control of their communities by taking control of their schools and really we're bringing the supplies we're bringing the paint we're bringing the equipment but communities in seven days are literally we did it in seven uh, communities across the country turning around um, their their entire school from uh, football fields to auditoriums to science labs to leaky ceilings to water fountains the bottom line is we in these seven schools we went to and i'm yeah. sure way too many schools across the country there's a big sign that says we don't care about you we don't care about you kids on them basically because of the way that these schools uh, the shape these schools are in and so what we want to do is by empowering communities to turn around their schools, let communities take the power back and realize how important parental involvement is, student involvement, teacher involvement, uh, and that's really what School Prize is all yeah, about. Let's get to that. I want to get to that part after the yeah. clip because you're 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 addressing the infrastructure and it's a TV show, and then I, I sort of want to know like what what the sort of the contagious aspect of it is in terms of how it gets to the people, how it gets to the the students, the teachers, the parents, all that. Yeah, no the doubt. PTA. So tell me a little. Set up the clip, if you will. Well, what, what I, this is, I think, what we're about to see is a is a feature length preview. So you're going to see the first episode that starts uh, October fifth. This Friday at eight o'clock on on NBC, uh, we go to Enterprise Middle School in Compton here okay. in in LA County, and Enterprise Middle School um, had a lot of problems. Basically, that's all I have to say. And when you see the clip, you'll realize what some of these problems were. It's just absolutely ridiculous that a school is in the shape, uh, in this shape, and in, in the shape that it was. Um, and we went in there with our team, and in ten days uh, for this first episode for the pilot, um, we worked with thousands of volunteers. Literally, I think. Uh, 2,500 right. um, to Is, is that to fix standard? I mean, do you go, do you do like before you get to a, a school, you sort of hang flyers and say, hey, we're Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Right? There's an unbelievable mm -hmm. volunteer team that yeah. works uh, in this production. Denise Cramsey is executive producer, and mm -hmm. she did work with Extreme Makeover. Um, and Denise's team. So I wasn't um, that far off. Yeah, no, well, here's it's the like thing. It's like a distant cousin. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. This show is centered around the makeover of seven schools across the country. Mm -hmm. um, but for uh, from my point of view, the makeover is a tool to talk about education in, in America. Right. And you're not going to see us picking out colors and doing the design. That's not what the show is about. The show is about bringing the community together around the makeover of a school um, to get people invested in education and talking about what's going on in their schools and, and to know, frankly, right. what's going on in their schools. And was there any synergy with Waiting for Superman? Is that Waiting for Superman is a fantastic movie, and we're yeah. lucky to be coming out. Um, on television after this film has come into theaters. I recommend it. It's a happy it. accident. It has nothing to do with um, Yeah, I think yeah. that the timing, you know, it's back to school time, and right. I can see why everybody would want to come back For now. Sure. But that, we are lucky to be coming on after that film has come into theaters. It's a fantastic film. I would recommend anybody see it. Um, also, and, the re release of Back to School would be good, too. We got to get all kinds of school. Every, every sort of school production right. needs to get on right now. A, B, C, you're in the top three. <laughs> uh, all right, let's, uh, JR, let's run, uh, let's run the clip of. Uh, of uh, School Pride. This is uh, Jacob Soboroff, one of the uh, co-hosts of uh, School Pride on NBC this Friday. Let's see an uh, old preview. Hey NBC, my name's Angel. I'm an eighth grade student here at Enterprise Middle School. The facilities are not what they should be. There's actually mold in the ceiling. Cracks in the ground, four inches deep. The locker rooms, the bathrooms, they're tagged on the wall everywhere. Mice, roaches. The students have nicknamed Enterprise into prison. We need help. 
These are maintenance requests for Enterprise. Yes, they probably get about a thousand. You need money, you need material, you need all these things to make it happen. You don't have the power to fix every one of these right. things every single day. And, and that, that bothers me. And listen, if I could save one of those kids and give them a decent school, that means a lot to me, man. Because that kid don't have to be on cracked asphalt. He don't have to use a toilet that's stopped up. If I could just save one of those kids from that, then that means that I did my job. My name is Tom Stroop, and I'm headed to Compton. We're going to help the community rebuild an entire school in 10 days. Come on, get down here! This is the school pride team. We're here to change your school. Do you like the school the way it is now? Are you ready to renovate? We had over 1,200 volunteers come out to help us. There's so many of you guys. Thank you so much. Carpenters, Carpenters. T-Building. I'm very proud of Angel for what's happening at the school. It, it just goes straight deep in my heart. My dad was born in Mexico. He had a hard life, and he wants us to have a better life. And I could make a difference in the world. That's what I want to be able to do. I think you're going to make a fine president one day. <laughs> it's not easy to live in Compton with what goes on, but I'm just going to do whatever I need to do to get the school the way we want it. It just goes around. If that person sees somebody doing a good thing, then the next person does something, that's how it goes. We can be anything, we can be anyone. Hey, look at him now. <laughs> hey, oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. You are touching a lot of lives in a very positive way. And then you see the test scores shoot up. Does he get an A? He gets an A+. Plus. Gets How about a, a hug, too? How about a hug? I would like to introduce you to Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. I have seen a lot of schools in my life, but I've never seen a school as beautiful as this one. When the whole community comes together, Miracles can happen. That's very good. We can break school bright chain. That's fantastic. Uh, uh, you know, you're a, you're a great uh, cheerleader. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, no, really. I mean, it's uh, first of all, it's it's hard not to be inspired when you see something like that. I mean, and 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 um, it's sort of it's the kind of thing that. And I keep saying this uh, extreme makeover, but yeah. that's sort of what we uh, we yeah. know of when we see something like this. But th th when you see it lead to you know its next space, which is in a school, it's uh, it's pretty inspiring. And it's no knock on extreme makeover. I think that. Um, it's important, actually, that we're using this genre of television yeah. to have a pro-social message yeah. and to get people engaged around education because, um, you know, let's be honest, reality TV is not the most pro-social genre of television no. that's out there. And so, For sure. And, and it struck me when we were watching that, uh, that, you know, the idea of softening on immigration when you see something like that. I mean, you saw this boy, I think his name was Angel, who's uh, the son Angel of and the James are the two kids that we follow. Son, yeah, of, this uh, son of a Mexican immigrant. And you think, you know, it, it's easy for somebody to sit back and say immigrants as a word and a block. But when you hear the narrative of somebody, a kid who is clearly so earnest about learning and making a school better and appreciative of what kind of a life his father had, however he got here, and I don't even know how he got here, but, uh, but it, the whole idea that, you know, that people could see this in a big way and then you know then you get into not just education you get into the issue of immigration what you'll see in every episode is that whether it's Angel and James uh, in Compton or Matthew and Frank and in, in Baton Rouge Louisiana we follow the stories of kids yeah. um, through every single episode and um, it doesn't matter where they're from or who they are um, the most important thing is, this, is that these kids are getting good education yeah. and um, they're not you know a lot, no. a lot of these times when we show up, and mm -hmm. and that's, I mean, that's what really drives these stories is yeah. that the kids drive these stories. It's not about um, the makeover team. It's not about um, 
the politicians. Right. Really, it's about making sure these kids get the best education that they can. And and when you know you know listening to you say it's about getting the best ex education, we see here in this clip and in the show, it's about the physical plant. I mean, you guys go in there and you repair the asphalt and put up the nice uh, you know door, et cetera, et cetera. What about what's the follow through on talking about the teachers, the quality of the education? I know there's the, the idea of school pride, yeah. and once you have pride in the place where you are, it affects everything. Two things. Number one, it is partially about the physical plan, and the physical plan um, is important to a degree because even if you have the best teachers in the world, if you've got ceiling tiles falling down, or if you've got mold, or if you've got rats, um, the kids aren't going to be able to focus. And in too many of these schools, our teachers and our administrators and our kids have to basically wear blinders like a horse does in a race to focus on their curriculum. Yeah. Um, and studies show that, the, the number one, that's important. But put that all to the side. Forget about it, even if that's not the case. In every episode, my role on the show as a journalist is to ask, why do we have to be in these schools in the first place? You know, who is to blame for the fact that a reality show has to come in and help a school, a public school in America, um, turn itself around. Yeah. And so in Compton, we look at a principal who has been hoarding supplies. Um, in Baton Rouge, we look at the fact that the state of Louisiana puts zero dollars into public school facilities. Literally, it's one of only a handful of states in so the whole zero, country. They don't put zero dollar dollars into, into school facilities. Uh, in Detroit, right. we went to a school, Communication and Media Arts High School, that for the third time was on the list of schools that were going to close, despite the fact the school had 97% graduation rate because it had bad facilities. And this, uh, in this episode in Detroit, it's a debate of big schools versus small schools. Yeah. Um, and because they want to move these kids, say, listen, these kids are good. We're going to move into another school that's got 2,000 kids or however many thousands of kids. Um, but the community didn't want to move. And, and they stood up and they reached out to us. And we came there and we told the district, listen, this small school works, clearly. Um, uh, U.S. News and World Report or Newsweek has got it on one of the best schools list in the country, but you want to close it because you want to move them into a bigger school. Um, there the debate is over big schools versus small schools. And, and in every school we go to, whether it was in, in Needles, for example, went to yeah. the rural Needles, California, where it was about 125 degrees. So it was insane. Um, and in Needles, this is a, a town that's built on industry. It was built on the railroad. Route 66 mm -hmm. goes through Needles, California. And the vocational programs there, auto body, wood shop, electrical, were, were going to waste while they were putting money into um, a second gymnasium. Uh, and so we asked them, you know, what, what's going on? Why is this vocational program, when you guys need it so bad, um, an afterthought? Right. Um, and, and, so, and what were the reactions, though? Uh, I mean, uh, did you work in tandem with any of the local school, bo school boards? Without a doubt. It, yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. It and, wasn't like you came in to show them. Oh, no. we don't. It's not like we go in and take over because, yeah. uh, like I said before, this show isn't about us. It's really us just bringing the resources. We're basically being a megaphone for the community. Um, in each of the places that we go to and doing it in an entertaining way so that people are going to enjoy it just like they do um, other alternative reality TV shows. Yeah. Um, but the underlying message is that we want people to be paying attention to what's going on in our schools okay. in this country. And that's why Governor Schwarzenegger sat down, and you'll see uh, in the first episode on Friday night, sits down with me in the first episode. And you, as you saw in the clip, he shows up at the school. Mm -hmm. um, Mayor Viragosa here in Los Angeles. Robert Bob from the Detroit Public, Public School System, Paul Pastoric from the Louisiana um, the Louisiana State Superintendent of Schools. What about Arnie Duncan? Have you had any contact with him? We have He's talked to Arnie. Yeah, Education. Secretary of Education nationally. We have talked to Arnie Duncan, and I think that um, they're engaged, they're excited about school pride, um, and we would love to have him participate. Yeah. I mean, in the he program. to me is one of these sort of rare, transformative people that come along in politics. I mean, just in hearing him speak, seeing what he's doing knowing what his track record in Chicago is like, he seems like you know, the kind of person who would be really into this. I mean, of course, to him, it's a, it's a superficial thing in a way, but it's the kind of grassrootsy thing that he probably likes as well. What we want to do is use this show to be a woodpecker on the conscience of America, just mm -hmm. like uh, you know any good social justice movement, honestly, where people are saying, this is what is happening in our schools, in our country, and uh, we're going to show you, but then you have to go afterwards and take care of it yourself because yeah. just like you said with the follow-through we're going to these schools and in seven days we're helping them with the physical plant but really what we want to do is help people get engaged in the school and stay involved after we go no that's the thing is there a follow-up to i mean we're to, first of all we're, we're talking with jacob soberoff he's the host of school pride it's going to be on uh, debuting this friday the 15th of october eight seven central and mountain uh on nbc it's uh it's a show uh, that you really ought to watch because it's a, you'll see also the state 
of schools. I mean, even if you're not into these feel-good shows, you'll probably be into it after you watch this, but you're going to see the state of where your education is, where your tax dollars are going, and that should be enough to be a woodpecker on your conscience. But I want to ask you about that. What happens, you walk away from the school, the show moves on to Needles, California, and then it goes to Detroit. What happens to, to Enterprise High School in, in Compton? I get uh, Twitter messages and Facebook messages from the kids that I met. We yeah. hear from the administrators. Um, we hear from the teachers. Um, you know, I get emails. These are people and, and experiences that will be with me for my entire life. To be out um, in the United States this summer and to work literally with over 15,000 volunteers um, was, was extraordinary. And um, they all know, and it's part of the deal. It's what we talked about when we went through with the LA Unified School District when we had a bit of a, uh, a problem initially getting into work in the school system here. The work that we do is guaranteed. If anybody has any problems, they can come back and talk to us. Um, you know, what we're doing is coming in and um, helping them change the physical plan, as we've talked about. Right. And, but we're not going to be there forever. And so we want, if there are problems, we're here to talk to. Um, and on a friendship level, on a personal level, I will know some of these people for the rest of my life, be in mm -hmm. touch with them for the rest of my life. Um, uh, and, and, and again, if there's anything that, that needs to be addressed in the schools, um, we're here. And, and I should say that one of the schools here in LA, it happens to be a school I play rec league basketball at before we ever did, before I ever did this show. Really? And after I did this show. And so, so did you make the court I'm a lot still nicer? there. Did you no, fix it up? the court was all right. We didn't actually work on the court. It's too bad you had a chance. <laughs> had a chance you know. My uh, feet are still slipping on. All right. Yeah, well, you can do something. You know, you can go back. You guarantee the work. You can go back. No, you got to watch uh, season two. Right. Uh, now, here's my, my other question: Is these the the children, the the kids in the school? Um, what is their and so what what is their role going forward? Do the do children from one school go to the other to kind of I mean is there kind of any relationship now between the schools of What's cool places? to see is see the students and the parents um, and the teachers interact on Facebook because if you go on our Facebook page yeah. at School Pride, um, everybody's talking to each other about the work that was done. Cool. And it's awesome to see that sort of a community is forming around this you know, larger project. Yeah. And, you know, some people could argue or ask the question, you know, do entertainment, can entertainment community service, you know, work together? And I mean, I think that there's a great argument for that. And you're seeing, yeah. I think School Pride is a great example. And, and not just School Pride, Jamie Oliver Food Revolution, look at documentaries, documentaries, especially Waiting for Superman, yeah. fantastic. And look at the, and just look at the films that participant media is making, not just that, Food Inc. Um, yeah, no, it's, I mean, certainly, I mean, it's what entertainment has worked I mean, from the USO and Bob Hope going on exactly. ships overseas. It's always worked in tandem with, uh, with, uh, with volunteerism and, and you know, it, they, they both fall short. One more thing I should say is that if people want to get engaged and when they see our show, they don't have to wait for our show. You can log on to NBC.com slash My School Pride, and we have a partnership with do DonorsChoose.org, and Donors Choose is an organization, nonprofit. So website. So it's it's uh, My School Pride. NBC.com slash My School Pride, okay. and log on NBC.com slash My School Pride, and you can donate to schools across the entire country uh, through this nonprofit, DonorsChoose.org. You, you, you could donate to the schools that we went to. You could donate to schools in your own neighborhood. This is a, an awesome crowdsourcing project where uh, teachers can put out requests for specific projects in the classroom, and then once they're fully funded through Donors Choose, um, the teachers can get the money that they want Great. to go towards their projects. Terrific. Well, uh, we'll have all those uh, websites on our <laughs> website, theyoungturks.com. Uh, Jacob Soboroff, come back and give us an update at some point. Yeah, I would Let love us to. know what's going on. I'd love to. Uh, the show, again, is School Pride this Friday, NBC, uh, 8 o'clock, 7 central. Uh, and it'll be airing, how many episodes are there? Seven episodes. Seven from now episodes. till Thanksgiving, so tune from in. From now till Thanksgiving. Uh, plenty to be thankful for.